this is Zahra Amar and today we're going to be talking all about how to cut strips, how to do them most efficiently and with things that you most probably already have at home. Um, before I begin, you need to understand that when you're using cutters or any sort of sharp objects, you need to be super careful about your hands and your attention needs to be where you're cutting. Um, so if you're watching a movie or if you're doing work simultaneously or talking, I'd rather recommend that you'd wait for some time alone to be doing this. Trust me, I mean, I've been to the ER once and it was because I wasn't paying attention. The first thing that we're going to talk about is paper. I pick up all sorts of paper. Whatever attracts me, I tend to go pick it up, and regardless of weight. Um, I do have a preferred weight. I like a light card stock, but I would you know, usually end up experimenting with different weights. Now, the first thing that you need to actually look for when you're selecting your paper is that it needs to be completely dyed through meaning if it has something written down below over here like a white core that means that when you're going to slice your paper up um the edges are going to be white they're not going to be dyed through so don't try to pick this paper up unless you want that specific effect um how do you know if it's dyed through it will usually say um like for example i picked up this beautiful paper and it says core dyed means if i cut this up it's going to be this exact same color inside so it's completely dyed through um sometimes i do realize that you know uh companies don't write if it's dyed or not dyed or if the core is white so what do you do like for example, I picked up this really beautiful piece of paper pad. Um, amazing colors. I mean, these are all neutrals, but I just love them. Um, I wanted to use them for my background, so that was fine. But if I turn this, you can see that the edges of this paper is white. That means it's core is white. I started cutting my own strips. I use the same method that I still use today but I have since then improvised a lot. Um, steel ruler is very necessary because if you're using a plastic ruler eventually your cutter is going to cut off its edges and you're going to be left with wavy lines which you don't want to have because you won't be able to stick them, they won't look neat, you want perfect sharp edges. Now, why I came to the cutter um, uh, back again was a very interesting story. I looked into paper shredders, um, pasta cutters, and uh, guillotines, and uh, paper trimmers. Um, in fact, I do use this Fiskars paper trimmer sometimes. Um, I used to use it very often, but I don't do it a lot anymore. And I'll just tell you why. So I came back to just saying, I came back to the this method again, and it has proven faster for me now. And I'll share my hints and tricks with you how to do that. So initially, whoops, Okay, so my tripod has broken and this is like a DIY solution. Um, so please bear with me. Uh, yeah, initially what I did was I used to mark um, my paper up here, down here and keep going on doing those things. Um, it used to take tremendous amount of time, but eventually I moved on to a quicker method. The quicker method was I would simply line up my paper along my cutting mat and I'll interject right now and say that if you are doing any sort of artwork, I mean it's not just quilling, if you're doing anything that requires cutting, um, you need to invest in a good cutting mat. Um, it is this 
uh, cutting mat I've had since the past I think eight years and I've used it extensively I mean um, like literally I've eaten it up alive and it's still here surviving with me so I um, I know I need to replace it I can see a few cuts here and there but what I'm doing right now is these days I'm just turning this around and now I am doing exactly what I did to the other side um, but here there are no guides there are no rulers so this is very necessary for a cutting mat that you need to have a very good um, guide along with it it doesn't have to be fancy it just has to be perfect all right so line up your paper here and right now I'm just doing a half inch. Um, I could line up a quarter inch. There are measurements all over here and even down below the, the area that you can't see. So I can simply um, line it up wherever I want the steel ruler up there and down there. All right. And simply And you end up with a very nice strip. This method gives you really nice, crisp, clean edges. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, when I looked into other methods like the paper shredder, the the problem with the paper shredder is the one, uh, you know, which a lot of people have been using, uh, the hand shredder, you get it on eBay for like $15, I think. Um, that has wavy edges in the end. Your strips end up with this wave, which I don't like. Plus, um, other mechanical shredders, they shred, you know, a specific width. So if that is the width that you are always going to quill with, go ahead, invest in it. But if you're cutting various lengths, then you will always come back to this method. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna show you is my Fiskars paper trimmer. Um, the, the, this paper trimmer is uh, favored by a lot of scrapbookers. Um, it's very good for most of the things that I do. Um, it cuts fabulous quilling strips of lighter weight, but as you move up to cardstock, um, there's a little bit of a problem that occurs now it doesn't happen in all of the paper but I've seen that usually reds and certain kinds of purple have this problem in which maybe it's the dye of the color or the weave of for certain paper um, it leaves uh, what do you say like like it, it feels as if lint is coming out you know so you've got um, I, the word escapes me but I, I think you get the meaning I'll show you um, so all right now another thing that I really like about this is the positioning you already know how much you want and it you simply have to place this right next to the guideline flip it right and the cutter is here and slice it down Hopefully this shows so you see this is what ends up happening to this paper which is not good your finished product looks really uh, let me zoom in. your finished product does not look good at all it has a certain bend but again, this happens only in certain colors. Um, I know for sure all shades of red and um, certain shades of purple um, have this problem. Other than that, it's all good. So I still use my Fiskars, um, not that very often, but only when I have a lot of cutting to do or if I'm, you know, gathering a lot of quilling strips just before, just when I'm, you know, in between projects, I don't have anything to do um, and I'd be cutting a lot of paper, I'd be using this. So the next thing that I'm going to show you, I came across it, you know, it was complete serendipity. 
um, I was roaming around shopping with my mother um, two weeks ago and she is a master tailor. Whatever she looks at, she can, you know, completely stitch it. Um, and I came across this in the tailoring section. This is a template for cutting um, strips of cloth. And I was like, you know, I can do this. I can make this exact same thing, um, probably because I've made templates out of plastic before, you know, for my baking, um, for other projects. And my mom was like, you know, what the heck? It's just like gonna cost you $15, just get it. And uh, I got this and I tried it out and it is just awesome. I mean, the amount of time it just requires you to cut through this is incredible. Um, the only problem is that the divisions between the line, which is the width, is just half an inch. So if you're working with half an inch, good and fine. But if you're working um, with more than half an inch or less, then you'd probably want to make a template of your own. Um, so this is what it is. It's a tailoring, um, thing shape cut slotted ruler and you're supposed to use it with a rotary cutter and it can cut multiple layers of fabric quickly so i've not really done this um on multiple papers at one time but um it also gives you angles here so it says that you can cut strips into diamonds into squares into triangles and you can cut fringes with these two but again the width will be half an inch right so let's um test this out so let's try this out line this is a 12 by 12 um inch paper and uh, i'm going to line this up at the corners and then line it up against the paper the interesting thing is that even the mat uh, this uh, template is gives me like 12 by 12 so that's pretty good and let's begin so you insert it inside and take it down insert it inside and take it down and they have suggested to use a rotary cutter which is a cutter which has a round blade and I do have that somewhere but it's somewhere there we go moving fast oops So my battery ran out in between and I'm back with this um, and again because it's with a cutter it has smooth sharp edges. I'm going to be cutting this premium cardstock um, which has been embossed. You can see the emboss feel and I just want to try out how this fares under the knife. Um...
fast and it's a two-toned paper as you can see but it's come out beautiful mm. if you ever do get paper stuck together for some reason it hasn't the blade hasn't gone through just slice it out over its edge and that's it it's awesome can't wait to use this one lastly let's talk cutter business um the last thing that i cut the orange sorbet paper um I should have probably cut the blade off because it was a little bit of, um, you know, um, blunt. And I love this cutter because it allows me to cut and use a lot of these blades. I've got replacements here. They're pretty cheap. I mean, for the amount of cutting that I do. Please be very, very careful. And there it is. So each of this blade, actually, you can break them down after each use that you feel it's blunt. Um, of course, do it with a um, plier or something that is more sturdy. Um, and this is how it happens the blade down below all right and insert it in here and as it goes in it locks itself right I use this for cutting and for scoring I do use the back side. Um, I use al alpha cutters. Even this is an alpha cutter. It's, it is replaceable, but I don't use this as often. The grip for this is much preferable. These also come out and they're replaceable as well. Um, I like this because I've been using it for a very long time. It's completely stainless steel body. It doesn't bend. Um, it doesn't lose... A, I don't lose my grip over this um, and I'm really really comfortable also it's not too thick and it's preferable especially when you're cutting things um, that you use it as a pencil um, your position should be as if you're holding a pencil it shouldn't be like this although you know you sometimes end up doing it like this but if you're ending up doing like this that means that the plate needs more replacement because you're putting in more pressure so it should be like this um i recently did a paper cut and just following these small tips that i learned myself from youtubers um i gathered this uh I've used a lot of blades, a lot of brands, but the one that I keep coming to is Alpha. Um, there are a lot of other brands out there. It just depends what you're comfortable with. This is made in Japan. Um, its steel is pretty sturdy. Uh, and they're actually not that very expensive. <laughs>